Hello. In this tutorial, I want to introduce the basics of power systems to power system engineering students. I will also mention some of the bigger and important discoveries. However, the video is by far not a historical factual report. Up to the 19th century, cities and villages were either dark in the night or illuminated by torches or in more wealthy areas by gas lamps. Electricity was just invented and somewhere in a dark basement of a house, a guy started to play around with a handmade generator. It may have been looking like this. So he connected wires to the generator and then he had a brilliant idea. He invented a light bulb. Connected the light bulb to the wires and there was light. Then he thought, why should I not place my small generator close to a city? and try to replace all these torches by light bulbs, one after the other. So everybody wanted to have a light bulb. And there was light and the city was totally illuminated by a new kind of light. Every the generator which was put close to the city may, may have been looking like this. Mayors of neighboring towns visited the city with the new lights and they also wanted to have light bulbs and the generator. So they bought light bulbs and installed it in their own city, including the generator. Unfortunately, the generators were loud and they were very polluting. So the idea came up to remove the generators from these locations close to the light bulbs, put it a little bit remote, a little bit bigger generation power, and to connect this remote generator to the cities by means of wires. More and more people wanted to connect their light bulbs to the wires. It happened that the light bulb started to flicker and the current through the wires went from amps to kiloamps. Therefore, the wires went hot. Luckily again, somebody got a brilliant idea. Since power is equal to voltage times current, I could transport the same power over the wire if I decrease the current but increase the voltage instead. Thus, I could transmit the same power but at lower current. This was the day when a strange animal was born, called transformer. Transformers were then built and connected to the line ends and on the spot flickering stopped and the line cooled down. This was the birth of the first high voltage transmission line. With the emerging high voltage transmission technology, two important marks were set. First, the transformer was uh, crucial for AC to win over DC. So far, they have been in a race. And the second thing is that the three phase system was invented, which was uh, crucial for a smooth operation smooth mechanical operation of the transmission system, especially at the generator. Let me come back to the three-phase picture and uh, start to be a little bit more technical by introducing the single line diagram of the scheme. The single line diagram just shows one phase instead of three. So what we have here is the generator, then we have the transformers at both line ends. This is the line. Then here we have connections uh, to loads. This is an example of the typical voltage level in a power grid. Generators would uh, feed at 10 to 30 kilovolts. Then we have a step-up transformer feeding the long distance transmission network. The voltage level on this type of long distance transmission network is between 220 kilovolt and recently 1100 kilovolts, such as in India and China, where they have very long uh, transmission networks, AC transmission networks. Then you have a uh, step-down transformers transforming the voltage down to 130 kilovolt, which is a typical sub-transmission network. This is a network which is uh, built normally around larger cities and feeding cities. Then we have large distribution transformers feeding distribution networks. The voltage level there is between 10 to 40 kilovolts. And then finally, smaller distribution transformers feed appliances and homes at a voltage level well known to us, 110 to 380 volts. Normally transformers are within the confines of a substation and the substations are at both line ends. So now we will see what 
additional type of equipment is needed inside the substation to make the whole grid work. So in the substation, we, we need more uh, equipment than just the transformers, as I was said, and now I will show you why. Such a lightning event hitting the line could create the short circuit, and the short circuit has to be interrupted by breakers installed in the substation. Therefore, in both substations at the line ends, we need to have not only transformers, but we need to have also breakers to interrupt the short circuit current. But if we have breakers, we need also to have relays who trip the breaker and the relays get the signals from current and voltage measurement transformers. And in order to avoid uh, over voltages penetrating the substations, we need to have surge arrestors at the entrance of the substation. And in order to be able to work on a line, if there is a defect on the line, I need to have disconnectors and earthing switches at both ends of the line. A real power grid is not only a point-to-point -point transmission line, as on this graph above, but it is a mesh network. Here you have an example of such a transmission system. You have all the power generation, then you have a transmission grid, in this case 380. You have connections to other adjacent grids. Then you have the so-called sub-transmission, regional transmission network. And then you have the substations where the power is distributed to the individual loads uh, through a medium voltage network. The individual bars with transformers in between represent uh, substations and the real substations look a little bit more complex. Here you have an example of a let's say 420 kV substation on the top level here, then here you have three transformers and on the bottom you have a medium voltage substation. Here you can see the corresponding equipment, medium voltage equipment, switch gear, then power transformers. And here you have a gas insulated high voltage switch gear. Here you have, for example, the European grid, which is a synchronized grid. Very long transmission line distances, several thousand kilometers. It goes from the eastern part of Turkey, Turkey to the western part of Europe. Portugal and even North Africa and all these networks all this grid is synchronized. You see the color codes represent individual uh, voltage levels. Red is for example 380, uh, green is 220 and so on. The small dots you can see all over the places represent uh, larger substations. Look at the part where the power is distributed to the loads, to the individual loads. This is the distribution network, which is operating on a medium voltage level. It's normally between around 10 to 40 kilovolts. And if you are looking at the distribution network alone, uh, there are three types of uh, networks. So you have the typical feeder network, uh, which is basically connecting the loads by means of one single line to the substation. Then you have ring systems, which are uh, rings built out of one substation. And then there are even rings which are connecting two different uh, substations. The individual substation connect the distribution level of 40 kilovolts to the sub-transmission or transmission level by means of transformers. The arrangement chosen for the distribution network depends on the selectivity and the availability which is required. Typically in US you have more these type of uh, feeder networks, whereas in Europe this is what you often see for different reasons. This is just an example of a power grid I know best. Uh, it's in Switzerland where you have typically two distinct voltage levels. It's a 220 kV or 380 kV for the longer distance transmission. This is transmission which uh, goes across uh, Switzerland. It is connecting uh, to Italy, France, Germany, and Austria. This is typically also the level where, where big power stations such as nuclear stations and big hydro connect to. And then you have the lower, what we call normally sub-transmission level, which is the high voltage distribution level. Uh, you have you connect smaller generation plants, but you have also larger industrial loads, and you also connect uh, the traction. The whole uh, train system is connecting to this level. 
then you connect uh, to the local distribution which is normally happening on 10 to 40 kilovolt and this is then the local grid typically uh, in urban distribution areas these kind of things so you continue by 40 kilovolts and then you meet small local uh, transformer groups which then really connect to 220 volts or 380 volts and distribute distribute it to individual houses or offices or whatever also you can see here that uh, renewables larger renewables are connecting to the medium voltage grid very large one not yet existing in switzerland connect and also to the sub transmission level but more and more you can see that also renewable connect directly to the 220 or 380 volt system which is directly connecting uh, to houses so this is typically how such a hierarchical distribution power distribution system would look like in switzerland but it's very similar in other countries so the swiss grid is just an integral part of the european grid so the whole challenge is on the european grid level where you need to make sure that all these thousands of generators uh, well work together everything is well synchronized the voltage stability is safeguarded across the whole uh, region and therefore there are basically three constraints it's the voltage stability constraint frequency stability and angular stability i will just highlight the frequency stability here in this tutorial the other ones are highlighted in other tutors which are uh, public as well so coming back to the frequency stability one of the key challenges of uh, electric power system for operators is to keep the balance between generation and loads at all time if the balance is not met for example if there is too much generation and not enough load to consume the generation the frequency or the rotational speed of the generators will just accelerate so energy goes into the acceleration of the generators whereas the opposite when there is a uh, too little consumption you know, too much consumption the whole system will slow down as if there would be a brake which uh, slows down the motor of a car so keeping the frequency stable is is key and uh, this is one of the challenges for system operators you can have a look uh, at at this uh, page here and there you can really see a real-time measurement of the frequency in the european system and i try to show it here you can see this arrow here how the frequency varies over time this is very tightly controlled by system operators it's automatic of course Another, another topic on top of keeping the frequency stable, meaning the balance between generation and load, the dispatch of the generators, control the load flow and execute power supply contracts. And this is done in big, partly decentralized control systems. You can see now that on top of all the automation you get in a substation to protect the substation and to open and close breakers, disconnecting switches and so on, to measure currents, to meet the currents, to meet the power. There are some network control centers, somehow this decentralized, and in these network control centers you really control the entire grid. You keep it stable, you make sure that the voltages are correct, you make sure that the phase angles are correct the entire grid is operated from these centers and these centers communicate with each other so there is also a lot of electronics and communication in the whole power grid so at the end i just want to show you a picture of one of the biggest uh, substations in the european system it's located in laufenburg switzerland if you want you can go to the simulator on the address below this is an online simulator you don't have to download anything and you can build up your own small networks and interactively check how the network uh, behaves if you change some of the parameters so for example you increase or decrease loads you change lengths of lines and so on so it's an easy uh, going simulator try it